Today we're going to show you 10 things you must do in Big Bend National Park, one of our favorite national parks. If you like hiking, canoeing, sightseeing, stargazing, or soaking in natural hot springs, this is the place for you. Make sure to stick around until the end and we'll show you some cool stuff just outside the park. This is Magellan. And this is Greyhound. Where we make videos about epic road trips, kayaking, hiking, and other outdoor adventures. Big Bend is one of the largest yet least visited national parks in the United States. Unlike let's say the Great Smokies, which has over 12 million visitors a year, Big Bend only sees 400,000 or so. Considering that it is six hours from El Paso and seven from San Antonio, this kind of makes sense. Located in West Texas and established in 1944, Big Bend is over 800,000 acres, a good chunk of which contains the Chihuahuan Desert, the entirety of the Chisos Mountains, and the Rio Grande, the great river that cuts not only a natural border for 118 miles between the U.S. and Mexico, but some beautiful and majestic canyons, and is the reason Big Bend got its name in the first place, due to the giant U-shaped arc the river created between the two countries. Emory Peak is the highest peak in the Chisos Mountains, and the fifth highest peak in Texas at 7,825 feet. Leaving from the trailhead near the Chisos Basin Visitor Center, it's a 10 mile out and back starting along the Pinnacles Trail, and then up the Emory Peak Trail. As you go up, you will see the famous window, the Pinnacles, and Casa Grande. The last few hundred yards are a somewhat difficult rock scramble, and overall you'll be gaining about 2,500 feet in elevation, so this is not an easy hike. The only thing we didn't love about the peak were these antennas. Don't forget to check out the Emory Peak window below when you're done. If you just wanted to go to Emory Peak and turn around, you would miss the South Rim, which gives breathtaking views of the Chisos. If you want to continue from Emory Peak, keep hiking along the Boot Canyon Trail and check out the Boot Rock. Follow this to the South Rim Trail, and then take in the absolute awesomeness. If you decided to do both Emory Peak and the South Rim, it's 15.6 miles total. You can also do this entire hike in reverse order, but Several locals recommended that if you're going to go up to Emory Peak, you should do it at the beginning and not at the end when you're tired and might decide to skip it. You will return along the Laguna Meadows Trail. On your way back, if timed right, you'll get to see the window at sunset, which is another trail you can do in the Chisos Basin. Upper Burro Mesa is a short, somewhat easy, 3.7 mile out and back hike near the Ross Maxwell Scenic Drive. There is only about 500 feet of elevation gain, and you get to explore narrow gorges and a really cool slot canyon that requires a little bit of scrambling at the end. Some people actually think this is where the trail ends, but you can go down through here to the pour off where you can also see the lower Burrow Mesa Trail. These do not connect, so please don't try to climb down to do the other trail. You will need to do them separately. Continuing on south down the scenic Ross Maxwell Drive, 
you will get to see one of the most amazing places in the park, Santa Elena Canyon, a 20 mile stretch of the Rio Grande. You can come here just for the view and do a short trail to the overlook, but the best way to see it is to paddle into it. So we recommend going with a local outfitter to do so. When we went, we did what's called a boomerang, where we went upstream, spent the night, and then came back downstream. <laughs> Santa Elena Canyon has immense 1500 foot canyon walls, cool coves such as Smuggler's Cove, and side canyons like Arch Canyon and Fern Canyon, which brings us to our next destination. Fern Canyon is a small side canyon within Santa Elena Canyon on the Rio Grande that you can access while paddling down. The location is also a great place for a campsite. It's called Fern Canyon because, well, there are green ferns growing on the rock walls from the unique, lush environment not typical of the desert's climate. It's also a nice way to stretch your legs from paddling as you climb through the white limestone formations slowly smoothed out by the water. There's even a little place called the birth canal where you climb up and get wet to keep exploring. This was definitely one of the coolest little side hikes we did, and we highly recommend doing it. The Hot Springs is one of the you cannot miss places in the entire park. After a long day of paddling or hiking, there's nothing like dipping into a natural geothermal spring at 105 degrees right next to the Rio Grande. If you sit along the side, you can sit in the hot spring and touch the much colder Rio Grande water. There used to be an old commercial bathhouse here called Langford's, but there are only remnants of that place now. Springs like these are believed to be healing to the body because of the dissolved mineral salts. Our next destination is the Hot Springs Canyon. We launched at La Clocha, and on your way to the canyon, you will actually pass the aforementioned hot springs which, yes, we got out for another soak in them, because Greyhound loves her warmth. Continuing on past the hot springs, you will then come upon Hot Springs Canyon, which, while not as towering as Santa Elena, is still pretty majestic. You can then eventually land at the Rio Grande village near Boquillas del Carmen. Our next destination is Boquillas Canyon, the longest and deepest canyon in Big Bend. To start this excursion, you will launch near the Rio Grande village and soon come upon the Boquillas Crossing, where you can be ferried across the United States into the small Mexican town of Boquillas del Carmen. There, you can ride a mule into town, eat some tacos, and enjoy a cold beer. Shortly after the crossing, you will enter into Boquillas Canyon itself, where you'll be bombarded with mind-blowing after mind-blowing views. See wild horses, burrows, and hopefully not any mountain lions. And sing Steely Dan like you're the king of the world because you got the t-shirt. At 33 miles, this is a three to four day overnight excursion that we did ourselves and was by far our favorite place in the whole park. In fact, it was the very first thing that we did. As with anything, if you aren't comfortable doing something, you can go with one of the local outfitters. If you do go with an outfitter, it saves you the trouble of getting a permit with the National Park Service. Because of the duration of this trip, and based on having paddled two other canyons in the park, this was the most remote place we have ever been. We never saw another soul until we reached our takeout point near the closed La Linda border crossing near Heath Canyon Ranch, where Big Ben Taurus picked us and our kayaks up. Shout out to Doug, good dude. Quick note, 
The only section you could bring sea kayaks on the Rio Grande is the Boquilla section, and even then, after dinging up ours, we think a canoe or raft would have been much better. Our next destination is Ernst Tanaha, a very short and flat one mile out and back hike that requires about five miles down Old Ore Road, which is primitive, unpaved, and rocky. Make sure you have a four wheel drive, all wheel drive, high clearance vehicle. Tanaha is Spanish for clay jar, and after a short walk and through a large rock corridor, you will see a large limestone formation and three water holes. The largest of the three water holes is Ernst Tanaha, and it's just cool looking, especially at sunset. Lastly, Big Bend is a designated international dark sky park which means that there is little to no light pollution to obstruct your views of the night sky. The National Park Service recorded Big Bend as having the darkest skies in the lower US 48. There is simply nothing like stargazing, and this is one of the best places to do it. This is a good time to mention two quick things. We weren't kidding about this park being remote. There's a small fire and EMS station in Terlingua, but the nearest hospital is 108 miles north of Panther Junction. The only gas stations are at the Rio Grande Village, and the Panther Junction. Otherwise, beware of your vehicle's capabilities and have appropriate equipment to repair and or get yourself out of a fix, because help is not exactly close and there's almost no phone coverage in most of the park, unless you have a satellite phone. While the park itself is amazing, we highly suggest a few things of note that made our experience more enjoyable, namely, the Terlingua ghost town in Old Terlingua. This isn't a tourist trap. It's an old mining town that has seen better days. Be sure to check out the old buildings, the mine shafts, the Terlingua Trading Company, have a beer on the porch, and eat at the old Starlight Theater. Go horse riding. We did two separate horse rides out of Big Ben Stables. One where we visited old mines in Maverick Mountain in Study Butte, and another where we visited canyons in Big Bend State Park along the Rio Grande. No experience in Texas is complete without pretending to be a cowboy. Lastly, get some DB's barbecue. If you're driving through Terlingua, look for a giant smoker set up on the side of the road. We ate there like three times, and Greyhound is a vegetarian. Sort of. Was. Maybe. You know. It's a process, 99% of the time until she smells authentic Texas brisket kind of thing. You will not believe that you can get this good a barbecue in the middle of nowhere. And those are our tips. We know there's more stuff to do, but we can't speak to what we didn't do. We hope you enjoyed this video, so please like and subscribe. Most importantly, visit Big Bend and the surrounding area. You will not regret it. We created extended individual videos for many of these trips. Check out the playlist above or go to our channel page to see more.